Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, I want to take a deeper look at some of the quotes that Zion McCollum gave recently following the Tampa Bay Buccaneers return to the facility. They are working on OTAs, voluntary workouts right now. And I just wanted to dive a little bit deeper into Zion McCollum, some of the things that he said, and look at whether or not McCollum may actually be ready to start for the Buccaneers moving forward as that cornerback two next to Jamel Dean. So firstly, on his mindset coming into this offseason, he uses everything for motivation, positive, negative. It's really no different, and you see a lot of players say that throughout every single year, right? Basically with everything. So every day I carry a chip on my shoulder and what I have to go get. So, you know, that's that's a cool thing to say. It's obviously good that McCollum is motivated. Former fifth-round draft pick is a guy who is being thrust into this potentially higher role as a starter now going forward so you do like to see the confidence there you do like to see that hey he does pay attention to both positive and negative things and are able to use that as motivation on what area he wants to get better at becoming a playmaker for him in college he was always known for getting his hands on footballs and making plays and i took a look back at his collegiate stats during his time when he was in college and yeah it is a very accurate thing to say uh, at Sam Houston, you take a look, and he had 13 career interceptions down here. He had two pick sixes in his career. You even take a look down here in terms of his tackle statistics. So again, 13 interceptions, 54 passes defended, six forced fumbles in his collegiate career. Like, McCollum was a playmaker. McCollum was a guy who could force turnovers or takeaways, I should say, for his defense, and at a pretty high volume at that. So that's something you want to see him get back to. That's something you really want to see him grow and improve on. Because so far up to this point, you take a look at McCollum. He has no career interceptions, no, well, two forced fumbles in 2023, which is good. So you're starting to see more of that side of McCollum that we saw in college. But the interceptions definitely have to get there. Again, only 12 games started, 30 games played in total for his career. There is still time for him to grow as a playmaker at the NFL level. And of course, that's something that he wants to focus on as well as he did that a lot in college. So, and if he plans on taking chances in OTAs, yeah, this is something that you see a lot as well, which is why I definitely take those types of things with a grain of salt. If you hear that a quarterback's throwing a lot of interceptions, if you hear certain things are going on, this is the time to do it. Experiment with your own play, with your team play as a whole, and just figure out some things that you like to do, some things that you don't like to do. McCollum per puts it perfectly here. You know, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm looking to fail and get better and fail and get better in OTAs. And this type of environment is the best time to do that. 100% agree with that. There really isn't anything to add to that. Congratulations to McCollum for getting married, by the way. He got married in the offseason. That is very big deal, of course. Him just continuing to grow in an NFL system. A, a lot of people say that by year three, year four is whenever players actually do get acclimated to an NFL type of system. So I definitely feel like if McCollum is going to take that leap, we should be seeing it either this year or possibly even a little bit more next year as well. But but definitely year three is where you expect a lot of guys to, to make those big leaps on a playing different positions last season gave him a, a holistic view of the defense holistic means basically everything coming together 100 percent now this is interesting playing safety and playing nickel he did play both of those the past year i know exactly where i want my safety and my nickel to be because i can put myself in their shoes that's interesting because it seems like that all indications i mean everybody expected this but of course to get confirmation of this McCollum is going to be playing outside corner. It seems like they're not going to experiment with him anymore at safety or at nickel. It seems like they are going to play him as purely an outside corner, which in my opinion is the right decision given the given the makeup of the Bucks secondary right now. You have Christian Izian who can play both safety and nickel. You brought in Tavier Thomas who can play nickel as well. McCollum, keep him at outside cornerback. That's where you want him to be playing going forward. So, communicating at a high level, can speak their language, they can speak my language, vice versa, all those different types of things. When Todd Bowles calls a call, just allows me to 
say I don't have to cover that, I just have to worry about this and giving them the reassurance that they don't have to cover the routes that I'm responsible for. And that goes both ways. And it's interesting to get that, that viewpoint and that opinion because, you know, whenever you do see players during plays get a coverage blown or whatever it may be, that is is easier to see who messes up on that coverage, right? So when a cornerback does look frustrated during a play, because you're relying on that safety or that nickel corner to have that coverage. And if you don't, that's where you get, you know, lack of communication. So it's interesting there. It gives a little bit more insight onto when those blown coverages happen, what goes behind that. It's because the outside cornerback is trusting that safety or that nickel cornerback to cover what they need to cover. The outside cornerbacks and cover what they need to cover. So that's when you get blown coverages and whatnot is whenever there is that miscommunication on how much his ability to tackle has improved this year and improved when I just finally learned how to tackle, to be honest in college, just running out full speed, leading with my head and hope he goes down. Basically, that is a wild way to think about tackling in like 2021 and 2020, given all the things with the concussion protocol and whatnot. So that that's just a wild quote in there as well. But rookie year missing a lot of tackles. I want to dive into that for a minute because was he missing a lot of tackles? He missed three in 2022 which was 11.1% of his total tackles that year. But it is still interesting. Of course, the missed tackle percentage did go down to 8.1%, which is an improvement of 3%. So we like that. But, you know, three missed tackles on some limited playing time is not the end of the world. So to say, to say that missing a lot of tackles... Three is not a lot. I mean, but but given the the limited the limitations of playing time, I suppose you can view it that way. I don't know. I thought that was just kind of interesting thing to take a look at there. So using the shoulders, wrapping up, staying on the feet. You know, the 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 NFL has changed like the hip drop tackle rule now, which is interesting. So it will be interesting. But hopefully this means that McCollum's going to be a lot better in run defense since he does have a better feel for tackling at the NFL level now, and uh, we will have to wait and see going forward. On Coach Bull's message for the first day of the offseason program, really it's just consistency, showing up every day, doing something, and not being good, but being great, which that can't, that's a very difficult thing. What he means by that is just if we're doing everything that we're going to need to do in training camp right now. So by the time we get to training camp, we're going to be that much further ahead. Fair assessment from Coach Bulls. I like that. Say, hey, guys, like if, if you're coming in here, you're coming into voluntary workouts, make sure you're on your A game so that you can get after it. So by training camp, you're already a lot better. So if McC for example, for McCollum, if he's coming into OTAs and he's coming into voluntary workouts as, hey, I need to start playing as a starting cornerback, by the time training camp rolls around, he'll be way further ahead in not even just whatever competition may be out there for him being a starting cornerback, a number two corner next to Jamel Dean, but will also be a lot more comfortable in that role also. So that would be good. We're going to be that much further ahead. It's not just watching film just to watch film. It's watching film, treating it like you're in season. I like that mentality. Kudos to Coach Bowles and for having that mentality because that's not an easy thing whenever you're what, five months away, essentially, from the start of the regular season. So to already have that mentality going into the building, I'm going to give kudos to Bulls and his coaching staff. That's a very good mentality to have. It wasn't that long ago we were in this building season fighting for a playoff spot, fighting to get the Super Bowl, so you can't lose that fire, that intensity. Agree 100%. We can stack these years instead of starting over every year. 100% agree with that quote. I think that's a phenomenal quote and a phenomenal mentality to have in this upcoming season because... Man, I mean, you know, you can lose a team and lose a season just like that at the snap of a finger. So, so making sure you have that intensity on a consistent basis, I feel like such a great message and, and a positive one at that. I wanted to take a bit of a deeper look at McCollum, though, this past year and, and how he did overall as a whole, because he does have that chip on his shoulder. So how did he do last year? You know, he started nine games in terms of being targeted. He was the 17th most targeted defensive back in the entirety of the NFL. Now, the minimum I have here is, by the way, the, the criteria I have here, the minimum is all defensive backs with 50 tar targeted 50 times or more. So uh, keep that in mind. But McCollum was the 17th most targeted defensive back in the NFL last year. Only starting nine games, 
that's a lot of targets thrown his way in a short amount of time. But you take a look at overall completion percentages when targeted, you have fellow Tampa Bay Buccaneer here, Christian Azian, allowing a 74.1 completion percentage uh, uh, completion percentage when targeted. That's the 10th most in the NFL. You have Jamel Dean with 66.1%. That's 30, 30th most in the NFL when the minimum is 50 targets. You go all the way down here to 63rd, Carlton Davis at a 61.4 completion percentage. And then you have Zion McCollum at a 59.8%, the 70th most cornerback on a minimum of 50 targets out of 107, by the way. So McCollum was the best buck last year in the secondary when of 50 targets or more when allowing a completion percentage. Now, I'd be curious to see what Anton Winfield Jr.'s was. Let me just go ahead and actually see if I can pull that up. Because that, that'd be a curious one to take a look at as well. He allowed a completion percentage of a 68.8 when targeted. Now, he only had 48 targets on the year, which was the most targeted he's been in his entire career. But obviously, you're not targeting him a lot. He also allowed a rating of a 102.0 when targeted. Antoine Winfield Jr. did. How does that compare to these guys that we have in here? Well, let's take a look. For quarterback rating... Jamel Dean allowed a rating of 111 when targeted. That was 14th most out of guys with 50 or more times targeted. You go all the way down here to 41. Carlton Davis was at a 96.1, which was 41st most. Again, when guys targeted 50 or more times. Zion McCollum was third with a 91 for 59th out of, again, the 107 eligible players. Christian Izzy in 83.5. That was 72nd. So McCollum, any, any way you slice it, Overall, had a pretty decent year last year. You look at, you know, quarterback rating when targeted, he did better than Dean and Davis. Only Christian Izian was better than him. And he also did better than, than Antoine Field Jr., by the way. In fact, let me let me just see if let me let me change it real quick to 48 so we can get Winfield Jr. in this mix. Because I want to dive a little bit deeper into this. So if we highlight all of our Tampa guys right here, targets, you know, again, McCollum was the most targeted Buccaneer last year in the secondary, more so than, than all of these guys that you're seeing. Of course, Winfield Jr. was, you know, on the bottom of this list. He was the least targeted Tampa Bay Buccaneer last year. But in terms of completion percentage, Izian allowed a better completion percentage. Winfield allowed a better completion percentage. Dean allowed a better completion percentage. And also Davis did as well. McCollum was the most targeted buck last year, but allowed the lowest completion percentage when targeted. That's notable, and that's an awesome thing to see for McCollum and what he can potentially do as a starter this upcoming season. Even in terms of passer rating, Dean allowed a higher passer rating than McCollum. Winfield allowed a higher passer rating than McCollum. Davis allowed, allowed a higher passer rating than McCollum. The only guy who allowed a lower passer rating was Christian Izzian, who had a great season of his own last year, by the way, also. So these are good stats to remember. These are good stats to see. I mean, even in terms of yards allowed, Carlton Davis allowed more yards than McCollum last year. And now, McCollum was the second most, and after that, Jamel Dean didn't allow a ton of yards. Winfield didn't allow a ton of yards. Christian Izian didn't allow a ton of yards either. I mean, Izian really did have a good year. But, you know, it makes sense as to why the Bucks did feel more comfortable trading away Davis and allowing McCollum to slide into that starting role. He did fine last year with the role that he was given. In fact, at least in terms of advanced statistics, he was arguably one of the best bucks in terms of overall coverage last year. So I'm going to be interested to see what McCollum can do with more playing time under his belt, getting thrust into that starting role. And you can't even really have an argument of, well, he's going to get targeted more, which could lead to lower stats. Folks, he was the 17th most targeted NFL player last year. And he was still able to allow the lowest completion percentage and one of the lowest, the second lowest passer rating last year. So it's not even a matter of, well, throw him, in, you know, he had such a limited time last year. No, you got targeted a lot and was still able to make the most of his opportunities and showcase some good play, which in my opinion shows, and I think it showed the Buccaneers as well, that they can rely on him as a starter moving forward or at least give him a solid chance. So we'll see. 
But guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions about this down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. What did you think about Zion McCollum's quotes? What did you think about the deep dive into the advanced stats? Let me know your thoughts and opinions. I'd love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. As always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.